She's one of the most prominent and probably the most important feminist voices that we have in the world today. Mona, is this your first time in India? No, right? No, it's not. I've been to India several times. I was actually here the last time in October for the Mumbai, the Tata Mumbai Book Festival. I absolutely reject capital punishment as a punishment for anything. I, I want the death sentence and the death penalty to be abolished everywhere. Um, sexual violence comes from the idea that men are entitled, first of all, to public space and that men are entitled to women's bodies. And um, execution and the death penalty and the death sentence are not the way to end this, this, this way of thinking. Feminism is the way to end this, this way of thinking. So I think that, you know, I salute Indian feminists and feminists from around the world, such as Egypt, for example, who have carried out movements that go out onto the street and that directly confront men who make public space uh, inhospi inhospitable to women. Um, I believe that we need, instead of just sending men to jail or just sentencing men to death, I believe that we need to make them undergo feminist workshops to teach them about respect to women. I believe we need legislation that ensures things like um, safety everywhere for women. Safety in, in public transport, safety in school, safety in the home. There are so many things that we can do that will uh, enable the goals of feminism, which are equality and justice, to be carried out and that will be much more effective than simply hanging someone or executing them. See, I'm not white and so I don't have the luxury of fighting just misogyny and sexism. This is how I often explain it. I am Egyptian, I am Muslim, I am a woman, I believe in sexual liberation, I often talk about sex and the right to my body and to practice and, and to enjoy sex in all its aspects and all of those things mean that I cannot just fight misogyny or sexism alone. So in an Indian context, of course, intersectionality is absolutely essential because imagine being a woman from the Dalit community. And I know that there's a lot to, being talked about right now after the suicide of that young university student. I'm seeing more people coming out saying, I am Dalit, right? So imagine being, being someone from that community who's fighting not just misogyny, but the caste system, classism in all aspects, elitism, poverty, all kinds of stuff, and also being LGBT from that community as well. So there are multiple fights and I often tell people it's exhausting to be a feminist of colour or a woman of colour who is a feminist, but it's a necessary fight because I cannot fight just one because that will not be the only way that I will dismantle this, this kind of institutionalised injustice that I'm fighting. Feminism for me is equality and justice and all of those things must be fought in order to guarantee equality and justice. It's a minefield and I recognize this and I'm often asked, you know, don't you worry that the right wing or the Islamophobes or the xenophobes will use your words against you. And I say, you know, of course I recognize that they can do that, but they are not my friends and they're not my allies. So I definitely, you know, I keep them at an arm's distance and I want nothing to do with them and I don't want their help. But I also reject the silence around these practices because that silence does not help women. It only helps the misogynists in my community that I'm fighting. And that's why I say we need intersectionality. That's, that's why I, I, I fight the racism of the right wing at the same time as I fight the sexism of, of some of the men in my community who insist on these harmful practices. So, and I, so I have to fight both of those in tandem. And so to those who, in, in the Indian, let's, let's speak about the Indian context. If someone um, in India wants to use Islam to show that oh, only Muslims are misogynist, I will remind them of various Hindu practices that are also misogynist towards women. What are you doing as a Hindu society or majority Hindu society to fight against misogyny against Hindu women? What, what's happening in the Sikh community? What's happening in all the communities? So obviously misogyny is not you know, a patent or, or copyrighted by Muslims. This exists. All religions use um, power to control women. All religions are misogynist against women, not just Islam, just Islam. But I, as uh, a feminist who is also a Muslim, I'm focusing on my own background. <laughs>